Having your own documentation for your app is a great way to organize your code. It's especially useful if you're working in a team or have a large code base. However, creating a separate documentation site while working on your app can be a hassle. With DocuSaurus, you can create a documentation site for your app in minutes. The great thing is that it's built on React and uses Markdown for content. It's super easy to get started, and in this video you'll learn everything you need to know to get started with DocuSaurus. Let's start by creating a skeleton DocuSaurus website. The recommended way is to include the classic template. It comes with standard documentation features, a blog, custom pages, and a CSS framework with dark mode support right off the box. You can also pass the TypeScript flag to use TypeScript instead of JavaScript. With that, if you open your project, it should look like this. Let's run the development server. And here's our documentation site. This is the home page. We have a header that links to our documentation called Tutorial, the blog, a link to the DocuSource GitHub repo, and a dark mode toggle that also works out of the box. The site is also mobile friendly and everything you see here is customizable. Let's take a look at how the doc works out of the box. We have a sidebar with a few pages. When we click on one of them, a drop-down of subpages appears. The page itself lists all the subpages, and we can click one of them to navigate to them. On the page itself, we have a path of document, which is a really nice feature. We have a table of contents that's automatically generated from the headings and then scrolls with the page. If you click on one of the headings, it will scroll to that section. At the bottom, we have a link to the previous and next page in the documentation. We also have out of the box code syntax highlighting. The code blocks have a title bar, and if you hover over the code, you can copy it to the clipboard with a nice little animation. And everything you see here is a markdown file. The pages on the left are folders, and in each folder, we have a separate markdown file for each page. The sidebar is automatically generated from the folder structure. So if we add a new folder, it will automatically show up in the sidebar. And if we add a new markdown file, it will automatically show up in the sidebar as well. So with DocuSource, we get so many features of a great documentation site out of the box, which saves us a ton of time. we get to that in a bit. By the way, the whole documentation is also mobile friendly. When we go to the blog, we see the most recent blog posts in the middle. The left sidebar shows a list of recent posts. The blog comes with reading time, authors, images, and tags. And it's also based on the folder markdown structure. So with just markdown files, we get a fully functional documentation site with a blog that has routing, code syntax highlighting, dark mode, and much more. Let's take a look at how it works and how we can customize it. Let's look at the folder structure. The blog folder contains all the blog posts. The docs folder contains all the documentation pages. In the source folder, we would add all the non-documentation pages, like home page, about page, etc., and any custom component we want to add. This is also where we add custom styling. Inside the static directory, we can add any static assets, like images, videos, etc. The docusource.config file contains all the configuration for our site, Finally, sidebar.js is where we would create our own custom sidebar instead of generating from the folder structure. The most interesting folder is docs, so let's take a closer look at it. If we go back to our local site, we can see some pre built pages. This is also reflected in the docs folder. If we only have one markdown file, we only have one page. If we have a folder, we have a drop down with sub pages. Each subpage is a markdown file. When we open the category.json file, we adjust the page name or the position in the sidebar. This means you don't have to name the folders the same as the page name, since the name of the file will be the URL of the page. Let's create a new documentation. First, delete all files and folders. This will throw an error in the browser. That's because we need at least one page in the docs folder. So let's start with a single page. Let's create a new markdown file named singlepage.md in the docs folder. If we go back to our local site, we can see the new page in the sidebar. If we click on it, we can see the page content. 
You can also see the path of the page in the header. If you want to organize our pages, we can do so by creating a folder. Let's create a new folder called Getting Started. Inside the folder, we create two new markdown files called Page 1 and Page 2. We add some content to them. With that, we have a sidebar with a dropdown with two pages. At the bottom, we can navigate to the previous and next page. The navigation is for all pages in the docs folder, not just the one in the same folder. If we click on the folder, it doesn't show a separate page that shows all the subpages. If you want to show a separate page for the folder, we can do so by creating a file called category.json in the folder. The category.json file is a file that allows us to customize the page name and position in the sidebar. The link object creates a separate page for the folder. The type property is set to generated index, which means it will generate a page with all the subpages. The description property is a description of the page that will show up beneath the title. And now the label has changed and a separate page has been created for the folder. The label also changes the link and the header. However, the position hasn't changed. That's because we need to specify the position for our single page. To add metadata to a page, we use front matter. Front matter is a block of YAML code at the top of a markdown file. It's enclosed by three dashes. This property changed the label, and this one changed the position in the sidebar. Now the position and the label have changed. OK, let's look at the markdown features. First, delete the current markdown files. We we'll create a new markdown file. Docusaurus supports all the standard markdown features. We can use headings, text, links, images, lists, quotes, code blocks, tables, horizontal rules, inline code, bold and italic text. If we look at the table of contents on the right side, we can see that headings 2 and 3 are automatically added. We can customize this and add an inline table of contents. Let's add a new markdown file called table of contents and add some content to it. By default, the table of contents on the right shows only from level 2 to level 3 headings. We can change this by adding a TLC property to the front matter. We set the minimum and maximum heading levels with min heading and max heading. Now all the headings show up in the table of contents. We can also add an inline table of contents. Import TLC online and create the component and put it where you want the table of contents to show up. The TLC variable is available in any document and contains all the headings. With max the heading level and min heading level, we set the minimum and maximum levels that show up in the table of contents. Now we have an inline table of contents that also works with jumping to the headings. And the neat little thing is that the table of contents on the right scores with the page and highlights the current heading. You might ask, how can Docusaurus use TLC or import in the markdown file? Well, that's because Docusaurus uses MDX, which is markdown with JSX. That means we can create our own React components and use them in our markdown files. Let's create a new markdown file called MDX. To see how this works, we create a custom component called tag that takes a color prop and renders a span with the color as a background. We can use this component in our markdown file and use it like any other JSX component, and we can still use markdown along with it. Using components like this can become hard to maintain because of the risk of parsing errors. It's better to create a separate component and import it. Inside the source folder, go to the components folder and create a new file called tag.js. We modify a bit to make it a default export. Now remove the code from the markdown file and import the component instead. And we can see it's still working. This is a much better way to use custom components in markdown files. Because we use MDX, DocuSource comes with pre built components like tabs. Let's create a new markdown file called tabs.md. We import tabs and tab item from the theme and create the component. The tabs component is the container and the tab item component is the tab itself. The value property is the value of the tab and the label property is the label of the tab. The default property determines which tab is open by default.
DocuSource comes also with alerts or admonitions. Let's create a new markdown file called alerts. To create an alert, you simply wrap the text with three columns and follow it with the type of alert. The available types are note, tip, info, caution, and danger. You can also add a title to alert by adding a title after the type. Here's how all of them look like. Now let's look at code blocks, something that most documentation sites need. Let's create a new markdown file called code blocks. Code blocks are text blocks wrapped around by strings of three back ticks. But you can add a tile after language. By default, DocuSaurus uses Prism for syntax highlighting. You can change the theme in the docusaurus.config file. Here's an example. We change the light theme to duotone light and the dark theme to night owl. If we go back to the code blocks, we can see that the theme has changed for both the light and dark mode. If you want to highlight some lines of code, you can do so by adding a comment. With highlight next, you can highlight a single line. With highlight start and highlight end, you can highlight a range of lines. You can also add line numbers to the code blocks. To specify the lines, add the lines after the language or title and before the property show line numbers. Each code blocks come with a copy to the clipboard functionality. If you hover over the code, you can see the copy button. If you click on it, it will copy the code to the clipboard. And that's how easy it is to create code blocks with many features. You can also create interactive code blocks with the Theme Life Code Block plugin. But that's a bit more advanced. Check out the DocuSaurus documentation for more information. The block also comes by default with a classic template. If you don't have a block, then add this line to the DocuSource config file. The block is very simple. Go to the block folder and you see all the blog posts. The blog posts are MDX files, so mark them with JSX. The blog post date is extracted from the file name. If you open up a blog post, we can see from matter, again with more metadata. You can add a select to the URL of the blog post, a title, a list of authors, and a list of tags. The read time is calculated automatically. We can use all the markdown features plus JSX we've seen before in the blog post. You can add authors directly like so, or create a global authors list, and then use it like an array. If you include truncate, then everything above will be included in the blog post preview. So in this case, Lauren Ipsum should not be seen in the blog post list page. If you want to add images to your blog post, create a folder like the welcome post and add the images there. Then you can use the images in your blog post like you would in a normal markdown file. Technically, DocuSource is not only a documentation site generator with a blog, it's a standalone static site generator. That means you can create any page you want. Let's create a new About Us page in the Source and Pages folder. If we go to localhost 3000 slash about, we can see the page. We can also add a link to the page in the header. Go to the docusource.config file and add a new item to the navbar array. Right now, the page is empty with no styling. If you want the header and footer, you can import layout from the theme and wrap the content with it. And that's how easy it is to create custom pages. Ryan and Dr. Source is based on the file structure. So if you want to create a new page, just create a new file inside the pages folder. It's very similar to Next.js. However, DocuSource doesn't support dynamic routing. So if you want to create a page with a dynamic route, you need to create a separate page for each route. Let's look at how we can style our site. The easiest way is to customize the custom.css file inside the CSS folder. You can customize the colors here. You can change the whole color scheme of the site. Here's an example.
Any new CSS you add here will be added to the site. For example, we can add a class called red text and add it to the h1 tag inside the about us page. Now the text is red. By default, Docosaurus automatically adds description, title, and canonical URL links and other useful metadata to each markdown page. You can configure them in front matter. If you use description with front matter, you don't have to worry about other description tags like OG description. Docusaurus will automatically apply that in the head tag. In JSX pages, you can use head from Docusaurus head to add metadata to the head tag. For more information about SEO, check out the Docusaurus documentation. Deployment is very easy with Docusaurus since it's a static site, you can deploy it to any static site hosting services. Just run npr on build to build the site. This will create a build folder. You can upload the contents of this folder to your hosting service. And that's everything you need to know about DocuSource to create your own documentation site. DocuSource is a great tool to create documentation sites and blogs. It's easy to use and has many features out of the box, which saves you a lot of time so you can focus on building your product instead of the documentation of it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.